In this video, I'm building the same website using 10 different design tools to see which one is better for your next project. I was inspired by this video from Elliot, so definitely check it out after we're done here. Now, before we use any no-code tools, let's build our first website with HTML and CSS so we have something to compare them with. I'm just going to build something super basic so you can get a feel for how difficult and how capable certain tools are. And I'm not going to do the exact same layout every time since I figured that would get a little boring. And honestly, with some of these tools, that's impossible. Okay, that's the structure. What are we looking like? Looks great so far. I'm not an HTML expert at all, so I apologize in advance for the spaghetti code. I'm just trying to work as fast as possible here. In general, I think code is a great option if you're building something really custom or complex. And you have all the flexibility in the world to make something look and work exactly how you'd want. But if you're just building a website for a small business or a personal project, it's perfectly fine to use a no-code tool, especially if you're building a website for someone else. It's so much easier to give someone a Webflow editor link than it is to hand them a raw HTML file and say good luck. Okay, here we go. This is the final design. Not too bad. Haters silenced, actually. George isn't washed up yet. Okay, our first no-code website builder is... Notion. That's right, the hipster Google Docs also lets you build websites. I'm building with Notion next to show you that most website builders are on a sliding scale from complex but capable to simple but limited. With code, you can build pretty much whatever you want. With Notion... Can I seriously not center text? It's a little different. Every no-code tool will be some trade-off between functionality and simplicity. There's not really anything you can customize with a Notion website, but I was able to build this in about 15 minutes. Okay. Here's the website on Notion. It looks just about how you'd expect it to. All right, next up is WordPress. They're by far the most popular out of anyone on this list. Apparently there's over 500 million WordPress websites out right now, so it's pretty big. Now when you first install it, WordPress doesn't do a whole lot. It's basically a blogging tool. But since it's been around for over 20 years, people have built a ton of plugins that let you do pretty much whatever you want. I'm gonna be using Elementor, which is a drag and drop editor that's really easy to use and also has a ton of extensions so you can build pretty much anything if you know what you're doing. Oh, that looks kind of spooky. This is the combo I use pretty much any time I'm building a website for a client because half the time their existing website is built on WordPress already and it's really easy for them to log on, make a couple changes to the text or images without ever having to touch code. That being said, sometimes it can get a little frustrating to use and it doesn't offer as many out of the box features as some other tools on this list. So if you wanna build something custom without having to code, I really like WordPress, but it's gonna be a little more complex. Okay, that's the WordPress section done. This one was probably the easiest to do since I have the most experience with WordPress and Elementor. If you want a website that you plan on having for a long time and you don't want to code, this is a great option. All right, now let's make a website with Webflow. Webflow came out in 2012 and it kind of took the design world by storm. It quickly became the tool that designers were using to build landing pages and websites. It's got a lot of really cool features like setting classes so you can reuse components. It follows the structure of HTML and CSS. So if you have some coding background, it's pretty intuitive most of the time. Um, my buttons are wrapping. How do I make this paragraph take up less space? I had a pretty good experience making this section with Webflow. A couple things tripped me up and it was a little hard to navigate the properties panel, but otherwise pretty smooth. The reason I don't use it for more projects is because it tends to get a little more expensive for the same features you can get with WordPress. Like having to pay over $800 a year if you want to avoid a fee on your e-commerce store. All right, well, that's Webflow done. That went uh, pretty smooth. I like that. Webflow is a great tool. I know a lot of designers that do everything in Webflow, and they're probably a contender for top three no-code website builders. Next, we're going to build a website in Framer. Now, before this video, I had literally never used Framer before, despite every designer I know swearing it's the greatest tool on planet Earth to build beautiful landing pages. I feel like every day there's someone posting the most insanely gorgeous website I've ever seen in my life using Framer. And that's thanks to their built-in libraries of plugins, templates, and animation tools that let you build some really unique designs that would be much harder to do with other tools. The idea behind Framer is that it's a canvas design software much like Figma, which lets you drag and drop elements directly into a frame without having to worry about things like responsive design. I thought this was going to be super easy and intuitive to use, but I ended up having a lot more trouble with Framer than I thought. Okay, in theory, this video should center itself in the next section when I scroll. <laughs> All right. All in all, I felt like if I use Framer more, I would get the hang of it and maybe I could start posting those great looking designs, but I probably won't build a client website on there anytime soon since it costs $2,400 a year to build a serious website. Okay, next up on our list is Wix. Now, I ran into some early trouble on Wix. Is it gonna load? 20 minutes later. Is it actually not gonna load? 
But once I got into the editor, it was pretty straightforward. Like Framer, it's drag and drop, it doesn't really care about responsiveness unless you tell it to. I remember building websites on Wix back in 2013, and they would look good on my screen and then just break on someone else's. Wix, I think, is kind of in this weird space. It's a little easier to use than tools like Webflow, but honestly, not by much. Um... How do I get this logo to fit? <laughs> and it's still pretty opinionated like other template tools, meaning it's trying to lock you into using Wix in a certain way, so making something custom is a lot harder. I have to say though, when Wix let me do something the way I wanted to, it was a really easy tool to use. But that wasn't super frequently, and I kind of decided to just throw something together and move on. Does it look good? No. <laughs> is it done? Yes. Okay, to cleanse myself of that experience, I decided to try out Duda. Duda came out in 2017 and very quickly became a niche favorite for small business owners who wanted something custom but were a little intimidated by tools like Webflow. I was honestly shocked how easy and intuitive Duda was to use. I could nest containers, use auto layouts, adjust spacing with the mouse. It honestly felt like drag and drop HTML. I really enjoyed using Duda and I would probably rank it as the easiest to use no code builder that has some actual functionality. All right, that was probably the easiest out of all of them so far, actually. Next up, we've got a real blast from the past, Weebly. I guess I can just choose from templates? There's no way to start from scratch that I see. Weebly was one of the first drag and drop website builders that came out onto the scene in 2006. Since then, it's been acquired by Square, which has their own website builder, but I wanted to give Weebly a try in 2024 to see how it compares against the other more advanced tools on the market. The idea is to select from a list of pre-made templates, change out the text and images, and then launch your website. It's a great idea and was revolutionary at the time, but it's kind of frustrating having to work with a template that didn't let you change much of anything. I don't know if you can tell from the screen recording, but I was struggling. I think if you're not techie at all and you just want a website fast to showcase your business, it can be a great choice, but I would definitely use another tool for anything more advanced. Okay, we're done. Uh, honestly, that was kind of frustrating, uh, and there's not much I can really customize, but oh well. Next up, we've got Squarespace, which is also a template editor, but with a little more customization for themes. <laughs> These colors are perfect. When Squarespace launched, I felt like I couldn't watch a single YouTube video without seeing either a Squarespace ad or sponsorship. They did a fantastic job of reaching out to creators, and I think it's a big part of their growth. The other great thing about Squarespace is the templates they offer are legitimately beautiful. If you want a good looking website but don't have any design skills, it's a good choice. Like other template based tools though, you are pretty limited in what you can customize. You're not going to get complex micro animations or user specific interactions, but you will get a decent website for your business done quickly. Okay, uh, pretty generic, but we got it done. Finally, we're going to build a website using Hostinger's AI website builder. I'm just going to describe Hostinger to itself and see what happens. Last year, Hostinger, which I used to host DesignSpo, announced it was creating an AI website builder where you could describe your business and it would automatically create a website for you. I actually thought the tool worked okay. With just a couple sentence description, it was able to build a decent website homepage that was fully functional. The big problem was when I went to customize it, the editor was pretty lackluster. Okay, this is all over the place. The big advantage that Hostinger has over Squarespace or Weebly though, is that the website's design is supposedly custom made from your prompt. So instead of working with the template, you do get something unique. While I wouldn't personally use this tool as a designer, it can be cool to try out with your business, and if you like the results, you could have a website up in just a few minutes. All right, last one. Oh, what a beauty. Okay, so we've tried 10 different design tools now. What's the takeaway? I think no-code design tools have come a long way in the last 10 years, and it's definitely possible to get a good-looking website built without code. If I were a new designer, I'd probably learn WordPress, Webflow, or Duda. And if I just wanted a website up quickly, I'd probably use Squarespace or Hostinger. And if you're in either of those camps and you want to learn more about design, you can check out this video I made here where I redesign subscriber websites and walk you through my design workflow. 